What's going on? Welcome back everybody. And we're going to talk about another holster today. And this one specifically is the T1C Agus or Agis or however the heck they say it. Now I know there's a ton of reviews out there on this one, but I really wanted to kind of get a review out there on this and then bring a couple of the bigger names head to head. Now I did recently do one on the Gerber holster setup and that thing is just absolutely an awesome holster. And I will leave a description for, or a link for that down in the description for you guys. So you can check it out because it was a pretty dang high quality holster. They gave a coupon code for 10% off, plus it was a little bit cheaper than some of the other big names like T1C. Now, I know you guys have probably seen a bunch of T1C holsters out there by some really big names on YouTube and in the tactical community and the teaching community because they make a pretty dang good holster. Now, the one that I got is for my CZ P10C with a uh, Streamlight TLR1HL on it. And I had been waiting to kind of decide which tier one holster I was going to get for which setup because... I kind of like to do certain things with certain holsters so I know right away which one to grab based on the color it is. And then I kind of remember that and then if I have 45 or nine, I usually kind of get certain colors so I know which, what is what and keep them separate. Because if you've got multiple guns or anything and you kind of you know rotate things in and out of the carry, you end up having multiple different holsters. So anyways, T1C is a big name out there in the holster communities, but they are easily probably gonna be one of the most expensive holsters that you're gonna buy. Um, far more expensive than some others, not much more expensive than some others, but they are definitely an innovator in the holster world and they make a good product. There's, there's no two ways about it. They really do. So what I'm wearing right now is my CDP 10 C with standard capacity magazines. It's that Agus rig. So for these, those of you that don't know, that is an appendix rig. So it sits in the front and it's got the, uh, the firearm and it's got a spare magazine on the side. So it's like a sidecar, sidekick. There's so many different names for it out there at this point. Basically, it's a gun and a spare mag in a holster that sits in the front of your body. So what I want to do is go ahead and pull the uh, zoom out on the camera lens just a little bit so you guys can kind of get an overall look. I'm wearing basic clothes for me, a pair of shorts and uh, just a basic shirt. I don't wear the baggiest clothes. I don't wear the tightest clothes. Um, I'll kind of pull my shirt a little bit tighter so you can kind of see if you're one of those people that wears a little bit of a tight shirt. Um, kind of see what it's going to look like for you. And then obviously the size of what you're carrying is going to come into play with that. And your body structure, you know, if you got a little bit of that tactical tummy going on, a little bit of that muffin top, you may print a little bit more than some others and may not be the best idea for you, but eh, maybe that's a motivator to get back in shape. So anyways, I'm going to pull this out, give you guys a good look at what's going on here. So as you can see, let's step back so I'm not over my stool. This is a basic shirt for me. So this is how I kind of wear clothes. It's not really overly baggy. It's not really overly tight. It's just kind of a general shirt. So you can see from the front, you can see from the side. This is kind of the way I wear clothes. I don't like tight clothes, guys. So, but you can see it fits well. It does not print. Now, if I pull the shirt back, kind of in the waistline area, kind of tighten it up a little bit, say you wear a little bit of a tighter shirt, you know, you're going to see maybe a little bit of that pistol grip, or this right here is actually where the clip is right there. But you can kind of see if you wear tighter clothes, that is really how it is going to fit for you. Now, if you got a little bit of that tactical tummy going on, if I press out a little bit, you're gonna, you're gonna see some printing there. You know, that's just, there, there's no two ways about it. If you've got a little belly going on, you know, an appendix setup like this may not be the best one for you or maybe just the holster only. So that's kind of a good look at it right there. And like I said, this one is the, the Agus. You get to look at my flabs here for a second. Those of you guys that don't know, flabs are abs made out of French fries. So there you go. I'm gonna get this thing off so I can show it to you. And we will definitely uh, get up close to it as well and check it out. Go ahead and fix that. So here it is, it's a, it's a good design. I do like it, the magazine sits ever so slightly higher than the uh, CZ does in there. And it's a fairly good size holster because I, uh, I wear them all now pretty much with my TLR1 HLs because it's just a very common light for me. I use it all the time at work and that's what I like. So this one, they've got it in a ton of colors for a ton of different setups with a ton of different lights for a ton of different guns. They really do a pretty good job of covering a lot of the market. CZP 10 c like I said, got that RMR, got my T, uh, TLR1HL on there. Definitely a really, really nice setup. I'm loving what CZ is doing. And then you got that uh, spare factory mag in there and obviously it's unloaded because I'm playing with it on camera right now. So it got that kind of wolf gray color and then got that zombie green on the back, which you know, signifies a lot of my nine millimeter stuff. Good holster. They've done a really good job um, kind of making this really compact without, 
you know, taken away what you need to actually make this, you know, be secure and hold. I always get a full sweat guard because it's Arizona and it's hot out here. And then you can get it actually with extension. Uh, it's a little bit deeper and you can tell them what extension you have in your mags. Really cool options. They use really good fasteners um, on their stuff. So good things. Like I said, they're pricey though. They are definitely pricey. So we're going to go ahead we're going to check this thing out. We're going to get into it and show you what it's all about. So you can kind of make a decision, is T1C for you? And then like I said, I will put this holster right here head to head with some of the other names that are really big in the holster industry. Uh, and then one specifically that, you know, isn't as well known, but makes a really awesome product as well. We're going to go ahead and check this thing out right now. All right, the T1C. A lot of people out there rave about these holsters, the Agus or Agis or whatever. And uh, I can see why. It's a solid holster. It's also the most expensive holster I, does, I own and will probably ever buy. So this one got from my CZ P10C. I am loving this thing. Shoots awesome. Feels good in the hand. Got that RMR on there. And that Streamlight uh, TLR1HL. Eh, different color. I don't care. It works. So obviously a sidecar style design, you got your spare mag in there. Obviously everything's unloaded because we're playing with it on camera. Got this one in that gray and zombie green back there. Cool, that blows out the light, doesn't it? A little bright. So quality setup here. Now, one of the things I look for in a holster is, are they using fasteners? The screws is what I'm talking about right there. Or are they using um, kind of those rivets, you know, those hole rivets. The whole rivet things, if anything's gonna fail in your holster, it's gonna be those. So I like companies that use mostly or completely all fasteners. As you can see here, T1C has used all fasteners and that is definitely good. They've got their claw right here. It looks like some form of ABS style plastic with their tier one logo and then their tier one logo on the belt clips as well. Um, everything else about the holster looks good, fits very, very well, locks in nicely. As you can see, this is not gonna fall out. It is not going to drop. And uh, it's gonna provide you service probably for years to come. It's definitely a good uh, good holster. Now this is, uh, the, I think it was T1C that kind of started this whole modular two-piece design. So these are actually button snaps on there. You can see right there. So you can take this apart and rock just that. Pretty awesome idea, pretty awesome design. And then a bunch of people do it now. So yeah, whatever. I guess if T1 wants to sue everybody, then they can, but they probably won't because I don't think they patented it, but a cool design. We move over into these clips here. Very nice. We do have some height adjustability right there, as you can see, which is good because some people will wear it lower. Some people will wear it higher. Definitely good clips. We can see we got a little kickback right there on that clip. Now what that's going to do is help keep it tucked onto your belt. So when you go to draw this, that, uh, little edge is gonna grab the belt and it's not gonna allow the holster to come out. Uh, the claw right there is going to actually help conceal that close into your body. Uh, and this thing does, it conceals very well as you guys saw earlier. Now they do have the uh, bottom completely closed off there for your light so you don't uh, have an issue breaking the lens or anything like that, which is good. Some people like it open, some people don't like it open, completely up to you. And then if you want to, go ahead and cut your own Kydex, who cares? Good setup though, no problems with the holster. Now let's talk about the finish work on it. Um, it's good. Um, they definitely uh, put some time in the finish work. I have seen better. So I have seen companies that do just a tiny bit better of a job, maybe kind of finishing off those edges right there or something like that. And then, um, like I said, this is pretty good, but you can kind of see some of the, some of the sand marks in there, a little bit of the grit. Um, wasn't quite polished off quite as nice. You can kind of see the bandsaw marks on a couple places, especially up here around the edge. I know it's very tough to see, but you can definitely see the bandsaw marks in there and stuff like that. So they could have finished it a little bit better, um, especially when you're paying 140 to $157 for a holster, you would kind of expect that. But in the end, it's, I mean, it's really hard to argue. It is a very good holster, high quality stuff and materials here. Um, designed very well. I really like the fit, the angles of it, and how it sits on my body. Um, if you're fairly in shape, this is going to be a great fit for you. Let's go ahead and uh, get back in the chair and finish this up. Definitely a good holster. There's just no two ways about it. Like, you know, as we saw up close, though, not quite as good on the finish work as some others. I mean, they did do a really good job. They did uh, a lot better than some of the other ones I've seen. Uh, but you can tell there's definitely a couple of rough spots still on it. Not quite as polished as some of the others, not quite as sanded down as some of the others I've seen out there. 
but they're making a good product. But you know, 140, 150, or 160 bucks, or whatever the heck it is, um, I happened to get it on sale, and uh, I think it was like the some kind of I can't remember which holiday it was. But they were giving like 20 percent off or something. So I went ahead and bought it. I know normally I want to say this holster is like right around 150 dollars, which is probably going to be the most expensive holster that a lot of us are ever going to buy. Um, especially if you've got different uh, setups going on, you could really spend a lot of money on holsters very quickly. Uh, but it's good. I don't think you can go wrong with it. The question is, are there other ones out there that can compete with it that are a little bit cheaper? Um, you know, the, I thought that initially that this part in here was going to be leather. It's some kind of rubberized something. Really curious to see what the lifespan of that is going to be as compared to leather. But the, uh, the quality of it is there. They use great hardware in there. Um, there's not rivets okay so rivets are typically the things that will fail in holsters from my experience this is all fasteners they're all screw fasteners that can be loctited in place once you fit it to your uh, tension and desires and all that really good stuff i do like it quite a bit i think they've got a great thing going on they're just a little pricey so i hope you guys like the video uh, if you guys like what's going on here and learning about this stuff and getting these unbiased reviews because i'm not paid and or sponsored by these guys like probably some of the other bigger names out there that are doing videos for them Go hit that subscribe button for me if you like the video. Go hit the like button. I will leave links down below for you uh, to their website and everything if you're interested. But if you're on YouTube, I can't put the links down there because they don't like it on YouTube anymore. Um, actually, they'll just ban you for two-way stuff uh, flat out. Uh, but I'll leave links down there for this and a couple of the other ones that I've tested out. And then I'm going to do a head-to-head, -head, like I said, with well, probably T-Rex, Gerber, uh, Tier 1, and then a couple of other companies out there uh, that are pretty well-known in the industry. I just kind of show you the differences in all of them so you can get a really good idea of what you are looking for. You guys get out there and have some fun, shoot some of that ammo you've been storing, take somebody with you and get them into what we are into to help bolster our cause. And I will see you guys on the next one.